Now, everything in one way or another is about the knowledge of God. That is, knowing God. God already knows everything. Yeah, but the, the manifestation of God, the opening up of his person, his glory, so to speak. There's no question that heaven is an expression of God's person. We know it as the abode of God where his presence is manifested in a way that is inaccessible to earth. No man can just decide to peer into heaven or know the things there. However, even there, there was found an imperfection in the knowledge of God. Lucifer, one of the highest created beings, if not possibly the highest created being, remember that description of him in Ezekiel, uh, we don't have a description like that of any other heavenly being, you know, to that extent. But that's, you know, we don't, we're not, that's not going to be like a point of doctrine there. It's just that it's possible. We know that he was very exalted. We know he was very close to the throne of God. Well, he sinned against the knowledge of God. He had a very good knowledge of who God was. And he sinned against it in exalting himself against the Most High, saying, I will be like the Most High. I will sit in the throne. So he, he opposed his creator. Now there's, there's got to be something wrong whenever you have been in the presence of God, the presence of God, and, and you think you can be as God himself. So it says that was found, iniquity was found in him. Now that's in heaven. Iniquity was introduced. So far as we know, the whole record, that's the, where iniquity was introduced. Whenever Lucifer, now Satan, exalted himself against God. And it didn't just stay isolated to him. He drew, as it were, the third part of the stars of heaven, along with his rebellion. So this was a this was a thing that that uh, would increase and spread like a virus. I think a virus is a is a very good example of sin. Leprosy is another because it makes you insensitive and you wind up dying from it. So this darkness uh, it it resulted in the expulsion of Satan and those that rebelled with him from the presence of God. But it did not, that expulsion did not eradicate the sin. Sin was still, it, well, it, it came down to us, but it was still very alive and present and, and uh, willing to, to work its way and infect. I says, but if thine eye be evil, Thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? That began with Lucifer. His eye, it, it was evil. And so he became the epitome of darkness. His sin was, was not only great because it was the initial sin, but it was great because of the position from which he fell and the, the amount of revelation that he sinned against. As for man, what was, uh, what was in the garden but a lie that corrupted the knowledge of God? Whenever Eve and Adam received that lie, then their knowledge of God was corrupted. Remember what Satan said. He said, God knows that when you you eat of this tree, you will be as gods. Well, what knowledge did they have of God? He was their creator. They were, they were of him. They were for him. But now they would be for themselves. Their view of God was, it wasn't just slightly skewed. It just ran off the track. So, 
The seed of all human woes was sown in the heart of Adam. Remember, God says their name was called Adam. And has borne fruit after its kind from that time forward. That's why all have sinned. That's why there is none righteous. That's why uh, it doesn't make any difference who you are, what you've done, uh, how old you are, or how old you aren't. All humanity requires a savior Amen. because of that. Brother Robert. I think it's um, applicable to bring this in because you're talking about the knowledge of God. So God wanted to be known. Mm -hmm. He wanted to disclose or um, reveal things about himself that had not been known previous to the revelation of it. So the fall of Lucifer wasn't like a random event. Mm -mm. I say this because if it was a random event, then God somehow slipped up. If you can see what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. He, he, it's just like, how did this happen? No, it's all happened because of what you're talking about. The knowledge of God. God wanted to reveal aspects of his character that required, it absolutely required an enemy. See, that he, if he was going to be merciful, and he, if he was going to divulge things about grace, he had to have individuals where this could be applicable. The angels at, at this point in time didn't need grace. Grace wouldn't have helped Lucifer. It, it, he had already said, like you said, he had already seen God. He was in his presence. So see, this was, God was going to do something that all, every bit of it, every bit of everything that God's ever done has been calculated mm -hmm. down to the precise moment when all these things occurred. The time came when Lucifer looked at himself. Now, Lucifer did do it. He was the one that right. looked at himself. He was the one that exalted himself. But see, God was up, up and above things. God was in control of the whole thing. He could have just, right at that moment, just destroyed Lucifer. Obviously, he's God. He could have done it. But he chose this means through which to demonstrate aspects, not only of his grace and mercy, of his mm -hmm. wrath. God's, the, God's showing, like you've already said, himself. Well, mm -hmm. this is a, quite an enterprise. And you know, for us, it, it, uh, for us, we would say there's some amount of jeopardy in it. But see, for God, known unto God are all his works. That's right. Before the foundation of the world. So nothing was ever out of control. Nothing's ever out of, out, out of God's control anyway. It may look that way from our perspective, but he's demonstrating that he is God. Amen. Amen. You, you uh, mentioned that one scripture uh, that known unto God are all his works from the foundation of the world. Also, uh, he tries his works. Mm -hmm. He yes. does that even now. Yes. Lucifer was tried mm -hmm. and he failed. Right. Those that followed him were tried and they failed. Mm -hmm. now, that's a very high view and there's a point at which we don't have any information or that's knowledge. Right. Uh, the whenever we get to heaven then we will probably be able to handle these things and it might be advantageous for us to see them then but right now the mysterious things belong to the Lord the things that are revealed belong to us and to our children so this is just an aside here though now we don't have a distinct reference to time before the fall like we don't know how old or how long, maybe not old, is that, that would be an obsolete term before the fall too. How long, uh, as we count time, Adam and Eve lived before the fall? I mean, it's complete conjecture. We really have nothing to pin that on. We just, whatever our surmisings are, and those are, they all fall into the category of our private opinion on it. It wasn't relevant before death time was not relevant before death because you you don't have an ending point so you do, you're not you, you you know to get from point a to b you got to have a point b there was no point b so the natural state of things as originally created is eternal as they participate in the eternality of the one that created them the institution of time was the seal of destruction to sin and a token of its end. The fact that God set boundaries on when sin could exist 
he had already determined, you know, it started here and it's going to end here. Yeah. So, and I'm sure that that didn't, that didn't completely escape Satan. Now in Romans 1, this is, we're going to read this because it, it's applicable to this, this matter of the knowledge of God and how everything, this is a central, a central um, thing that, that everything else can plug into. It's one of the hubs, one of the big wheels that the little wheels fit into. In Romans 1, verses 16 to 32, you follow along if you'd like. So I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Amen. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it to them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like unto corruptible man and to birds, and to four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through lust, the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshiped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use unto that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death and not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Now that is a very sobering text. Yes. Now what, what is it that drove all of this stuff? They didn't like to retain God in their knowledge. When they knew God, they rejected the truth. They changed the truth. And so this is what happens. These are the outworkings of the death that, that we are subjected to when we are, when we are cut away from God. Only, only God can change these things. People who look like good people, whenever you compare them to the righteousness of God, they still need a savior. I mean, we're glad for, for every kindness and every goodness and, you know, where all of these little mercies. And even the wicked sometimes can, can show these things. You've seen people that look like they don't have a good bone in their body and they'll do something kind, you know. But see, that's not really who they are. That God's righteousness is the standard. Amen. If we're going to... See, this salvation isn't just like... A place where we're going to go that where we don't have to go to hell we're being brought 
into the presence of God. We're being joined to the Lord. And so we have to be, per he says, be ye holy for I am holy. That's why. That's why we have to be holy. We're going to be, and we are in Christ, joined to a holy God. If God turned his face, as it were, away from the sun when he became sin for us, do you think for an instant he's going to He's going to give us his face when we are sinful? No. And with God, it's a perfect righteousness. It's a perfect holiness. So you, you can't have any unrighteousness in you. If there is none in God, there can be none in what he joins to himself. None. It's hard for people to think in those terms because uh, we've only known here and now. It's by faith that we can see these things. Now, how serious is ignorance of the things which can be known of God? Well, just ask yourself, how serious is death? That's how serious it is. Because ignorance of the things that can be known, because God, if it can be known, that means God has, has given it to be known. And for us to remain ignorant of these things puts us at best in a place of jeopardy. Amen. If we willingly ignore it or Amen. refuse it, then it puts us in a place of real danger. Yes. We, it, it, nobody, nobody is going to reject the truth and be held innocent right. of that. Yes. I was thinking about you uh, being ignorant of God. And so actually being ignorant of God, there's a big void there. Mm -hmm. And I thought about Adam and Eve, you know, how God directed conversation between Adam and himself. Yeah, see, now that, that, that premise would also extend then to the angelic host that followed Lucifer. But see, what he did know, he, he wasn't faithful to. Yeah. And that's the point. God wasn't holding the fall. God didn't condemn Adam for the things he didn't know. That he had not revealed. I don't mean he didn't know because he just didn't bother to find out. He didn't know because it hadn't been given to him to know yet. Yes? Well, he just, he, Adam didn't do what God told him. That's, that's right. What, that's, what, that's, that's what that's about. That's I right. I told you not to eat from the tree, and you did. That, that's what, but this, I'm talking about just not knowing God. Right, right. Made him liable, and Satan slipped right on in there, and he's this big void of not knowing God. He filled it up with ignorance and darkness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, I think we'll see as we progress through this that, well, you can't compare what has been given to us in Christ from what's been given to anybody uh, before Christ to the extent and the ability to receive the truth and understand it. Because before, men didn't have the mind of Christ. They, they, there were some very godly men, but they didn't have the advantages. I remember one time Brother Gibbon was... Uh, talking about John the Baptist, and it said of Scripture there was uh, none other born among women greater than John the Baptist. He, he had the, the Spirit of God before he was even born. Remember, he, he leapt in the, the womb of, of Elizabeth whenever Mary, who was carrying the Christ, was in his presence. He, that's how sensitive that was. But he said it was, the, and but Jesus said, greater than that are the least in the kingdom of God. He said it was like John the Baptist was a was a giant standing in a valley yeah. and we're midgets standing on a mountain. Yeah. And so he he was a, it takes nothing away from him. He was a very, uh, Jesus recognized him as great Amen. in the kingdom of God. But he also recognized that the effects of what he was going to do would overshadow anything that went before. So it glorified his work in the earth. Now the truth cannot 
be held in a in a beneficial way, in a right way, in an acceptable way, uh, in unrighteousness, because unrighteousness is against the truth. Brother Aaron. It's hard for us to uh, to see Adam's experience and to fully uh, like to assume his right. his experience because for one we've never lived any life but the life that we have now. So right. you know we, we don't know what it was like to live in the in other generations and certainly not in Adam's. But think about he began life as an adult, so he's he's got cognitive mm-hmm. faculties. Uh, and I think much better than, than ours are now because it, he was there was no corruption. In the image of God. Yeah. There was no tainting of, of sin and darkness at, at that point. Mm-hmm. Yet there's no, there had been no experience, human experience. Yeah. Right. So we've learned from Adam's experience and from Noah and Abraham, the, all the record. Mm-hmm. We've learned from all this, and we and so we have. We mentioned, you know, fairly regular in our assembly how people are real quick to criticize the, the um, patriarchs, the, the patriarchs, the fathers. Yeah. Well, realize you got to compare now what they didn't know That's compared right. to what we do know. Yes. And so much the more compared to Adam, what Adam didn't know compared to what Abraham knew. You know, Abraham mm-hmm. did have some records that he could, uh-huh. that, that he had, had been passed down, you know, that he, that, that he knew. And so when we, we think about this temptation of, of Adam, it can't be compared to, to our experience of temptation. That's right. It was, it was the first. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. It, what we what we can reason on safely is what is revealed. Right. And and we do draw inferences from that. And w- at, at some point, Adam was not assigned as the originator of sin, but a participant of sin because he was influenced, and so we know that also. Yeah. But. Uh, he, because he did fall, there there was some, it, there, there was a deficiency found in him. Yeah, it's, not, it's not by accident, it says there in Genesis 2.17, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Uh-huh. Right, now that's in comparison now to the knowledge of God that you're talking about. So what did they trade for? But see, I don't think that they were aware of I think they realized, no. I'm trading the knowledge of God for the knowledge of good and evil. But see, this, this is not any accident. This is not God's phrased it exactly the way that it That's should right. be phrased. So that we would be able to draw these conclusions. There are some things that are not worthy of trading. Mm-hmm. And that's this knowledge of God. Jesus says, this knowledge, this is eternal life. Mm-hmm. This, is where, this is where the core of what God's doing is moving people is to know him now anything that's outside of that it well it, it, we may be involved in it we may have to go to work but it's not to be compared with the preciousness of this knowledge mm-hmm. of, of being able to see him now we know in christ in the new man there is a sacrifice if you want to know god it's going to cost you something it's going to call you're going to have to crucify this other mm-hmm. it's going to have to go because you can't have them both but, yeah um, it, it's we found, I see Brother Aaron's right, we have this revelation, we have this contextual revelation that God's put in, in, in time. Now how wise he is, how he established mm-hmm. this knowledge. It isn't something, he just didn't like at one time on Sinai tell us all about himself. It, what we would have a context for, but he's given us a context in time and in the revelation handed down. A context whereby if we just will give heed to the things that he's 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 revealed, he will will have a well anyway it'll be made known whether or not we want it. Mm-hmm. And if you do, well, you're on good ground. Amen. Yeah, this this uh, I'm glad you brought up that that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God knows what evil is, mm-hmm. but God Himself is not evil. That's right. Yeah. So for God to know what evil is it hasn't changed him what adam and eve did they knew evil by participating in it that's and that made them unlike god now see in christ we we can recognize what evil is see there's a matter of discernment here too 
we can see and we can discern very frequently and we're growing in our abilities there because it can present itself in very subtle ways. But we can discern that's evil, but that new creature has an aversion to it, says, and I don't want anything to do with it. It's unclean. Yep, Brother Larry? And all these things, we talk about how it's more, it was different for Adam than it is for us today. And yet, with all the complications we have in our world, com com complex world we're living in, all the uh, innuendos that go with it, it boils down to obey or disobey. Mm -hmm. And Adam had this choice to obey or disobey through Eve. You, you can, Adam can't take all the blame. It's in Eve too. But it is obey or disobey. And that's the same choice we have today. Whether it's in complex, which is complex or not, we still have that same choice to obey or disobey. Mm -hmm. And that falls on all our shoulders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whenever, and again, he, whenever talked about those that had not sinned, uh, according to the, the similitude of Adam's sin. See, he sinned against a direct command of God. Amen. God said, don't eat. Now, he knew that. Amen. And he knew who said it to him. God said it to him. And so whenever he ate, he, he fell by transgression. Now, some people, they're sinners, but, you know, like you take a little baby. Well, they're not, I mean, they're... It's not the same thing. A little child, they're, they're not necessarily sinners because they have willingly disobeyed a direct command of God. But their nature is sinful. And so they've inherited that from Adam. So, anyway, good discussion there. Now, uh, when it says they held the truth in unrighteousness, See, that, that's a corruption of the truth. And that's like Madeline Murray O'Hare preaching a sermon or trying to lead somebody to the Lord or reading the scriptures to you. See there, it's, it's not... Remember Jesus, whenever he was in the days of his flesh and the, the man that had demons in him, they, they said, we know who you are. Have you come to, to torment us before the time? You know, and they, they were saying who he was, and he told them, be quiet. He wouldn't receive that from them. Remember the Apostle Paul, when the woman that had the spirit of divination followed. Now, if all you did was like lift what she said out of context, not know who she was or the conditions, and listen to it, you'd go, amen. These are the servants of the Most High God that yeah. teaches the way of salvation. <laughs> amen. But it vexed Paul. Yeah. It vexed his spirit. Why? Because it was an unclean witness. That's right, that's right. And God doesn't receive that. And so he, he makes us clean. And uh, it, even, even the Israelites, he pulled the Israelites. He created a people for himself. And then he kind of kept a lid on iniquity through the giving of the law and was teaching them about himself. And they were different than the heathen. Now some heathen saw that and they proselytized. They, they came into uh, and were assimilated into to the Jewish uh, religion there. And that was a precursor of the entering of the Gentiles. Like it wasn't like you weren't a blood Jew so you never could have anything to do with this. Well, but you could become a Jew if you, if you accepted and you believed in the God of the Jews and accepted them. So, well, I don't want to get too far off of that. Um, 1 Corinthians 1, verses 18 through 24. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For after that in the wisdom of God, the, the world, wait a minute. For, uh, 
For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God, it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified. Unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness, but unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Okay, this is the knowledge that only God can give. This is a demonstration the scriptures are talking about. I don't care how smart you are. Some of the smartest people we know are foolish when it comes to the knowledge of God. Oh, what is, I can't remember some of these people's names. Hawkins, he, the, the real famous physicist and stuff. You listen to him. I mean, I wouldn't suggest you do it a lot, but you hear some of the stuff that he says yeah. about the beginning of the universe and all this stuff, and he's got all of this, you know, physics and stuff like that, and people would just fawn all over him. He's so great. He's so smart. He's one of the smartest people that ever lived, and yet he does not even know the Creator. Now, that's, that's like a major ignorance there. The whole creation is, it's a manifestation of the Godhead and his power. And here's a man that's wasting all those brain cells trying to figure out another way to explain it all. But he'll be, he'll be held accountable for that. He's resisting the truth and he is teaching others to do so also. Brother Jeremy. Yeah, this is why God gave Solomon understanding but to show that you can have all the understanding in the world, but mm -hmm. in the world, but to have understanding to know God, you got you got to have a heart for God, and you got to see. Well, Solomon got even with his wisdom, he got off at mm -hmm. the end there with all yep. the wives and everything, his concubines stuff. But if we're going to know, have an understanding of God that we need for eternal life, we can't give our heart and our minds to the world. That's right. We've got to protect ourselves, and we've got to continue to um, stay with with the Lord, or, or else we understanding we may have it at one point, but it will be taken away from us mm -hmm. if we give our heart and minds to the world. That's right. Well, what is eternal life? To, to know, know God. God. Amen. Right. Yeah. Hey, so Amen. we're talking about a pretty foundational topic here, Brother Ricky, and then Sister Melissa. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good. Yeah. And evil. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, Adam and Eve were able to experience goodness by seeing how God was responding to sin. They were not experientially good. They became evil by nature. That they saw how someone that <coughs> is good responds to iniquity. God did not ignore the sin. Mm hmm. Yeah. He did not put it, push it underneath the carpet and just move on. Yeah. He immediately, that's the first thing we see next after they said, you immediately, by the presentation of Scripture, see God going to the point of sin and dealing with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Satan is, is, is becomes the source of all this iniquity because he was a sinner from the beginning. He was, he, was, he was the one that instigated this. A liar and curse. a murderer. Mm-hmm. See, but now, but see how you see God responding to man. He doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't destroy man, although he hates iniquity. There is this level of forbearance and mercy that is shown to man as he's driven out of the garden, although sin is utterly rejected by God, see? And so you see this, that what salvation becomes is God retrieving a sinful man while hating the sin, see, I in no way would promote the idea that God loves the sinner but hates the sin. Right, yeah. But there is, it is important to recognize that there is a degree of forbearance and mercy that you see from that point on. You see that it's being shown all through the Old Testament record of God hating sin, but yet providing a time of forbearance. Yeah. So that he can provide a salvation to rescue man from sin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, when we think about the knowledge of God, 
Those two things have to be in place yeah. as we understand it. We can in no way present a God that will accept sin as it's being presented today. But we also don't want to give the notion that there's this idea that God is not showing forbearance <coughs> and is not providing an opportunity to save the ungodly mm -hmm. because that is who he's saving. And so yep. so uh, that's an important foundation that we see there in Genesis. Yep. And our understanding has to be shaped by those two considerations. And the apostle, whenever he, he wrote of those that were called and preserved in Christ Jesus, in other words, they weren't taken out before his work was done in them. Sister Melissa. Uh, you had spoke about this experiential knowledge. And really, that's the knowledge that, that God planned for us to have in the beginning. Mm -hmm. The only way that we can be made in his image is to be able to understand all these things. And see, God knows, he already knew these things, but we couldn't just know them without having experience. And so we were able to, to learn what evil is. And so... So uh, Brother Jeremy had said, you know, you got to keep your mind set on the Lord. you got to stay in this. So this experience, you got to stay in this experience of the Lord. You've got to stay in uh, being made in His image because if you don't, then that's unbelief, really, is what it comes down to. And so you're not made in His image. If you stray away from that, then, then you're, you lose those things. Mm -hmm. It's like your experience changes. So your experience has to be one of continually being transformed into the image of God. See, now, talk about this discernment between good and evil. The Apostle Paul there in, in Romans, he talked, he said, The good that I would do, I do not. And that that I would not, that I do. So, uh, and he said that, that it justified God, that God was righteous. But see, in this discernment, he was... He was deserting between what was good and evil, even in himself. In his old nature, there was a tendency to the earth and things that were not of God. But his that new creature that he had been made in Christ Jesus, that that one could not sin because it, it was born from above. And so he, Paul, refused the, the evil and chose the good. The new man ruled and reigned. And he had a desire to it. And he it was the other was a burden to him to be kept in subjection and crucified and put off. So th th that's the difference now. See, whenever whenever Lucifer came to to Eve and to Adam, that's what they didn't do. They didn't say, no, it's an evil thing to disobey, disobey what God has told us. Yeah. If they only knew two things, and I'm sure they knew more, but if they only knew two things, God said, and don't eat. Now that's enough if God said it. God said, don't eat. So there, and it, people go, well, that's not a big deal. Well, that's because if you think that's not a big deal, it's because you've just lived in a world of sin where there are liars plenty and you've been desensitized to it. I can remember whenever it was a big deal to tell a lie. It was a big deal to be a liar. Now we have people, I call them recreational liars. They don't even have a good reason for it. They just lie because it's fun and because they can get away with it and they like to fool people or they just, they don't. And if somebody says, you're a liar, it's not an insult. You go, so? Yeah. This is not normal. This is not normal. And it shows how bad sin is. It started off with disobedience of God. <coughs> and it seems like today people say, well, that wasn't a big deal. Well, it is a big deal because just like a you start off with an oak tree, just a small seed, and it starts growing. Well, it's not a big deal until it starts <coughs> becoming... You see how big it, just, it doesn't stop. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Sin has no end to it. It's evil from the beginning, and it doesn't stop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You can see the progression of um, liability, as it were, as you come closer and closer to God in Christ Jesus. You're, you're exposed to more of His character, more of His 
this um, his mercy itself and his grace itself. So you're exp you're, you're not just exposed to it, you're experiencing That's right. this grace. You're tasting so it. So this is why it's it. See, we're we're in a time of jeopardy now. And we're not locked in. You can't just say, "Well, I, I believed back in 19 whatever," and now I'm. No, see, the fact is, is that just as they wanted to go back to Egypt, you could be tempted to go back. See, this is yeah. so. There's a there's a jeopardy now. Yeah. If you walk in the spirit, you won't fulfill the lust. But that's Amen. the only place you won't. Amen. Amen. So see, these things, and, and and the degree of jeopardy is is marked by your knowledge of God. How how much has God revealed to you? I mean, Paul gets so so strong in his expression of those who were once enlightened. See, why? Because see, they had been exposed to God. Why wasn't Lucifer retrieved? Because he was in the presence of God. He saw things that that should have provided him, like you said, an opportunity to say, "No, I want this. I want God more than." But see, this this wasn't. It it's Lucifer's not a man. That's right. He's an angel. That was created in the presence of God, and so this is, see, this is, and now in Christ we've been recreated. Now, see, someone who's been recreated, it's a very serious matter for them to <coughs> shut down the grace of God. You know, and, and obviously, it's not something that just happens overnight, but it is, it is a serious matter. And I don't think when I was younger that I thought it was as serious. Uh huh. But it is serious. This is a very, very serious matter because God has as it were, invested um, in you, giving you to see some things of his nature. Now, for you to turn away from that, see, it has been better for you not to have known the yeah. way of righteousness, the way of truth, than for you to turn away from it once you did know it. So this topic you're on, see, this is very vital. And what God's doing, he's ensuring, as it were, speaking as a man now, he's ensuring that this never happens again. Only those who have seen him you know, to whatever degree God's revealed him, have seen and have wanted him and have pressed in to see him more. That's all the only ones that are going to be there. Amen. Not the ones who I made a perfection back whenever I come in, I got baptized, and okay, that's all good. But are you right now? Are you pressing in right now? Do you want to see him more clearly right now? Because if you don't, you stand in jeopardy. So, okay, now, and whenever, whenever we look at this, the higher we get up in our view, the more everything ties it together and the stronger it'll actually become. There isn't a lot of strength, and I'm not saying anybody did this, but there's not a lot of strength to be gained when people are coming along and giving you all the little details, teaching the Lord by precept, precept, line upon line, precept upon precept, so that they'll be they'll fall back. That's what happens. This knowledge of God is something that is given to every believer at their conversion, at some level, and the capacity to grow in that knowledge. So uh, we don't need somebody necessarily. Now, there are things that need to be taught and corrected, and I'm not saying that. God gives us teachers. He gives us preachers for the perfecting of the saints and for the, the maturing of our faith. But... We don't need we don't need our whole life long we grow in the knowledge of God the more infantile we are in our knowledge that's where precepts and stuff come in you don't know that you're supposed to do this all right let's take a baby step do this do that this is how that happens but then you grow up and you know God and it doesn't make any sense to not do that anymore nobody's got to tell you do this do this you just you know you, you're growing up well if somebody told you as an adult what they told you as a three-year-old you'd be highly insulted uh -huh. well and talking about this this knowledge of God and going back right there were people who were in jeopardy of that because they needed something but here's what Paul said for if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. And in another place, he wrote that, uh, that they've done despite to the spirit of grace, and they've crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh. To themselves. Now how, I mean, 
The condemnation of that is incalculable to us. So to have known the truth and to do that, the, those two things, a person should quake in fear at the thought of that. So you talk about devilish. That, that is a devilish thing to do. That's what Lucifer did. He turned away from the knowledge of the truth. He didn't crucify the Son of God afresh, but it wasn't offered for him. But still, he was the one that provoked them to kill the Son of God. He was at work in it. So, uh, man could not, cannot, nor can he ever attain to the knowledge of God. That is, he cannot restore himself to the person of God. See, that's what Adam and Eve had. They had a relationship. I almost hate to use that word because of the way it's flow, thrown around. But they, what to the, to the measure that God had given them, they knew him. They knew him. They knew who he was as far as their creator. Uh, Adam was there whenever he was given a wife. He knew that God had opened up his side and created a help meet for him. We know he knew that because he didn't, he, we have no record of him going, where did you come from? Uh -huh. Where have you been? You know, he knew God presented her to him and said, and then he said, and Moses tells us, this is revealed to Moses. This is now bone of my bone and flesh of my uh -huh. flesh. He knew where she came from. So, um, it was the Lord who had to will and effect this great salvation. Men had no power to reach up and grab hold of what he, even what Adam had, much less what we have in Christ. Amen. In Galatians it says, How be it then, when ye knew not God, ye did service unto them which by nature are no gods. Now this testifies to the innate need of man to be connected to something higher than himself and the vanity of his efforts to find the truth. So even if you're searching around, unless God, God has to, to will to be found of you. Amen. And he's gracious in doing that. He says, search. If, uh -huh. if perhaps you feel after me, perhaps you find, but that's because he's put himself within reach Amen. of us. Amen. If he doesn't do that, you don't find him. Amen. At his will, he can hide himself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's sad that in the professed church, I know we talk about this a lot, but we've got a mixed multitude in congregations. And so it's necessary to, to talk about, I mean, it's, if it's the truth, if it's reality, then we shouldn't draw back from saying something. Uh, but within the professed church, there's not only a gross ignorance of God, but a contentment with it. Legion is the name of those who are content to go to some sim assembly or another, really not pay much attention to what's going on because they're disinterested and uh, just get talked to for a little bit. And then they go home and, hey, they're done with it. They're free until next week when they got to go for another hour Sunday morning. And that's the way they would prefer to have it. They just, they don't want a lot of intrusion, a lot of interruption in their daily living. And so there's not any, see, the knowledge of God has not been grasped by people like that. If they knew who God was Amen. and that, that he can be touched with the feeling of our infirmity and he loves those that have come to him, been brought to him by his son, Christ Jesus, that we have been made a people to him. God looks at his people, his, his children, they're a people to him. In other words, they're somebody, not just somebody. They're his. Yes. There's a consumer's, pardon me, a consumer's mentality in the church. Yes. We're here to get. We're here to buy. We're here to pay and get what we paid for. So that's what's so unique about our fellowship. We understand by God's own nature that if you give, you also receive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what he does. He receives because he gives. And so we do the same. Oh, amen. That's a good point. Now, there are many hungry souls languishing in these environments. 
being made in many instances to feel like um, they're abnormal. They're the odd man out. Not so. Not so. God sees you. If nobody else does, you have a heart for God. He sees you. And I, it, whether you're in a, a company of many believers or false brethren or abject people who are, are have rejected the truth, that make a difference. God can see you anywhere. And then, uh, but this ignorance is the enemy of our souls. Yeah. Never, never think of ignorance as a so what big deal. Always think of it as something to be gotten rid of. Well, what you feed will grow. If you feed the flesh yeah. and, give it and make way for it, it'll, it'll grow. Mm -hmm. So if you if you tailor your services and they get in and get out, the flesh is content with that and give it, the flesh can handle that. Mm -hmm. But then if you give to grow and understand God and Give your mind to the things of the Lord. It'll grow. Mm -hmm. See, now that's how you feed. Remember David. He's a, he's a perfect example of this. He delighted in the law of the Lord. Amen. He meditated on the word of yes. God. What was he Amen. doing? He was feeding. Yes. He, he, it wasn't like just, there's the scripture. Some of the kings, it was like they all the kings were required to have their own volume of, of the law. Mm -hmm. So it was there. It's like setting a plate in front of somebody and they never pick up their fork. Yeah, yeah. They're not feeding. That's right. Whenever you're feeding, you are actively gathering. You're thinking right. on, you're loving what you hear. Amen. And it, you know that you've eaten it because it, it starts to change you. You, right. can, you can see a Amen. noticeable change. Right. And uh, your growth rate can be yes. pretty astounding. Yeah. God... God, when he fellowships with you in the truth, you realize a great advantage. Amen. Amen. Now, in Romans 10, verses 1 through 4, it says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal to God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. See, they couldn't, they had zeal. They had zeal, but they were ignorant. They didn't, they didn't have the righteousness of God, which is by Christ Jesus. So, did, did God say, well, that's okay. You've been under the law a long time, and I know this is kind of like a hard jump to make. And so, no, because God testified, the prophets testified of Christ. There was enough written in the scripture that a person, the apostle Paul didn't see it. God opened his eyes. And whenever his eyes were open, he saw it all through the scriptures. Look at the wonderful teaching, the deep teaching. Peter said, that our our Beloved brother Paul, he teaches things that are hard to be understood. All of these things that he had gathered, it's like they they were realized in him, yes. and it, it was wonderful. Now you got to get something in in order to get something out, and so. But he had he had nourished his heart with a desire to serve God, a conviction that God is and also whenever the spirit was given to him and illumined him that was an explosion brother Larry you know it's strange and horrible in some ways how we can be trained up in our families in our schools we hear the same word again again and again and we can become indoctrinated we can become yeah. What we learn, we become what we're fed. I was raised in a church, and I was in, and I visited, and attended many churches, and have all said the same thing: we cannot live without sin. We've got to sin. Mm -hmm. 
for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It's scripture they hold on to. What am I hold on to? They hold on to it very dearly. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3, 23. Right. And it's there. It's, and we all know that. But it's in past tense. For all have sinned yeah. and come short yeah. of the glory of God. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't see that until I was way up in, in, the, in my education. But when we look at the Word, when it's, when it's poured out our throat, when we look at the Word, when we see what the Word is saying, we go on to Romans 6, chapter, the first two verses, and God says, uh, through Paul, He yeah. says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. God forbid. Amen. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Amen. And that's the word for our lives. And it speaks again through, uh, through uh, Paul in six chapter, that same sixth chapter, 22nd, 23rd verses. And it speaks through, him, through John, the one of the, my, the right hand men of Christ in the book of Revelation. It, speak, uh, it speaks through uh, John. John speaks again, again and again, about what we should not sin. John 3, uh, 1 John 3 in the 6th uh, verse, 1 John 3 in the ninth verse, 1 John 5 in the mm -hmm. 18th verse, all speak to the fact that we cannot sin and be true to God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah be not deceived. Amen. He that worketh unrighteousness uh, is unrighteous. Is Brother Jonathan. Yeah, on that same note, there's that role of sin, that's part of a, a pretty lengthy sentence. And the very next thing that's said there, he says, For all of sin and fall short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption mm -hmm. that's in Christ Jesus. That's the very next thing said after that. Right. The point he's being there is not that, well, everyone said it all the time, all the time, all the time. That's not the point. The point is, see, because all have sinned, salvation, it applies to all men. Like, they're all going to be saved. That's Everyone's right. going to be saved through faith. Everyone's going to be saved through Christ because all have sinned. So they're mm -hmm. all part of the same salvation. There's right. no one excluded from that because of the fact that we have all partaken of that same sin. Amen. That's the point being those. Yes. Yeah. Very good. All right. And then uh, <clears throat> another, another thing here. Paul wrote to the Corinthians, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren. I would not have you ignorant. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because there's advantage to not being ignorant. Amen. God is not ignorant. There's no darkness in him. He knows, he knows all things. And as we draw near to him, we can, we, when I say all things, it, again, I'm, th I'm talking about the things that God has revealed to us okay i'm not talking about omniscience like god has but he has he has determined that we should know a great many things and it is for the glory of god Amen. mankind was created for the glory of god and what is that glory it's to be made like him so yeah. that whenever anybody that can behold the church sees us what are they going to think of they're going to think of our Savior. They're going to think of our God. And we're individual members, but we are the body Amen. of Christ. We are the bride of Christ. So, I, the, ignorance is not like God. So in spiritual matters, if you find in yourself you're just ignorant about something, there's a remedy for that. Yes. Don't be content in it. Amen. Ask the Lord for grace. Amen. Grow out of it. He will, he will bring you up. Amen. So now it says in 2 Corinthians, and he's, he was talking about that man who had sinned and been put out of the assembly, and then he was, he was talking about receiving him back because he had repented and that they should forgive him. Paul had forgiven uh, him for their sakes in, in Christ. And it says, lest Satan should get an advantage of us for we are not ignorant of his devices. He would use that to destroy the fellowship. He would use that to destroy that, that soul that Christ had, had died for. He would destroy the work of God in giving that man repentance for what he had done. We're not ignorant of his devices. Now, Amen. if you are, then you're going to suffer the consequence of that ignorance. 
Paul wasn't willing that they should be ignorant there. And then in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 13 through 18, it says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others that have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which also, which also which sleep in Jesus, he will bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain at the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Now, if they're ignorant of that, where is the comfort? Yeah. How can they be strengthened by something they're ignorant of? How can they defend themselves against the assaults yeah. of Satan? They're dead. You're never going to see them again. No, don't be ignorant. Amen. When he comes again, we shall all be gathered unto Amen. him. Don't be ignorant. That's right. That feeds your hope. Yes, yes. That supports your faith. Yes. That 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 gives you the, the it's like talk to the hand. You know, you don't have to listen to that stuff. It's a lie. You can determine it right off. Amen. And then again, Peter writes, This second epistle, epistle, beloved, now I write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord of, and Savior, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts, that they're, uh, and say, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they are willingly ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. But the heavens... And the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, <laughs> beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. In other words, don't be discouraged by your sense of the timing. It... It might look like these scoffers when they say all things have continued as they were from the beginning of the creation. It might look like, hey, it's been a long time. How do we know this is true? By the word of the Lord. Yes. And that by the faith in what God has already done. And he is not restricted that his timing is perfect. And whenever the fullness of time for that comes... It'll be here just as surely as these other things. Brother Jeremy. Yeah, this is where truth will set you free because it will ground you. The understanding and truth will ground you and sell you where those who are ignorant and lonely ignorant will go with whatever fad and, and thing that comes up. And today they're over here. Tomorrow they're over there. It's like a roller coaster ride where truth will sell you mm -hmm. and keep you firm all the way through. Yeah. And it will not allow you to be pushed to and fro and all over the place. It will keep your heart settled. That's through right. Times of trial, times of good, times of bad. It will settle your heart all the way through to the end. Amen. It is, it's endurance. Right. Because the truth doesn't move. Amen. Yeah. Remember in the prophets, whenever uh, God said, do not move the markers. That's how truth is. You don't, it doesn't move. Yes. It sets things. It marks it out. There's the boundary right there. Amen. So it's not up to men to move it around. Amen. God has set it. That's it. Amen. And when, and when men do move, move things around and make it look as if it's not, 
you will not be moved. That's right. Amen. That's right. In the physical creation, God manifested the Godhead and his power. All things were made by him, and then he crowned this new realm with the image of himself, man. And as all things are under God, yeah. now see, we're, we're seeing a, a likeness here, an image, a, a, uh, something in the, the physical that represents something that's in the spiritual. Man was the representative and the representation of God to the physical creation. When man sinned, everything under his charge and dominion suffered the corruption of death and temporality. God allowed the expression of man's fallen nature, exposing outwardly its spiritual deadness. And that's when we're talking about after the expulsion. And God had not given any other laws or anything, but he had given man a conscience, and there was a knowledge of God. Amen. We know that because Enoch walked with God. Amen. We know that because Noah had some knowledge that he was able to receive what God said about building the ark. He didn't go, God, there's a God? All of these other people who had corrupted it, they had, they had at least the knowledge that was a God somewhere. Like if we went back to the antediluvian world and you said, there is a God, they'd look at you like you're crazy. Like, well, who doesn't know that? Yeah. Everybody knows there's a God. Now they may not agree on who he is and what he does, but they would know he's a God. It was so startling. We have moved so far off of this foundation that God is. I can remember the very first time I ever heard somebody say they didn't believe the Bible. I was like eight years old. I was sitting in the back of my granny's New York Chrysler. And she was getting gas at a super test station and the gas station attendant she was it, we were out and I don't know she, she mentioned something about the Lord and he says well I don't believe the Bible and I was just glad I was sitting I was flabbergasted yeah. I could not believe somebody actually said that yeah. it, was, it was startling to me alright now that moved from there to where we are today yes. where it's a very very Bless surprise whenever you find somebody that believes we have descended very deeply but it's because the knowledge of God is not in most of what we see all right now God God demonstrated uh, that he had not taken his hand off of the earth even though there wasn't a lot of direct revelation we see that in the flood he didn't just let men go continually on he washed the earth he scrubbed it yes. and, st and but he there was still mankind and there was little revelation even then for man to take hold of it was during uh, this time that the the days of men were significantly reduced from living hundreds and hundreds of years to eventually getting to uh, three score and ten, or by reason of strength, four score years. And again, the workings of death and sin. God began to make himself known in Abram, Abraham, and then to a greater extent in Moses. In them, he laid the foundations of faith and law and the, uh, the uh, effectiveness, what was effective in each. To Abraham, we see the effectiveness of faith. He received the seed that God promised him. Even though he didn't, he didn't occupy the land promised him, but in his seed, he will. And the revelator of God is the Lord Jesus Christ. And he came in the fullness of time and light for a second time came to the world. This time it was the light of the glory of God that came with Christ. So we see a progression here. How God started. Brother Robert mentioned this also. That there's a, prog a progression where God has laid a sure foundation. Yes. And he's yes. drawing us into this by that. 
It's not just that we're stepping back and we're just observing. And then we go, oh yeah, I see that. We actually are drawn into this by faith. And of course we participate in our generation according to the dispensation that we're in. But we saw the, the ineffectiveness of the law to change anything. We saw the, and the faith was the first covenant. And that's what we, through his seed, have been brought into. So now, where are we at? Christ has come. The spirit has been given. Uh, he's working in the earth. This, this great salvation, which was promised before. Now it has come to us. Now what? Now we are epistles. We ourselves are living epistles of the truth of God. It was revealed from a distance. It was put in the law and the prophets. It was, it was brought and demonstrated and lived out in Christ. And now it is lived out and demonstrated in those who are Christ's. And that's one of the reasons why whenever you see somebody that has confessed Christ and you see them sinning, it's not just a reproach to them. It's not just a reproach to his people. You are sinning against Christ himself. And don't think that any offense against the Son will not be dealt with by the Father. Now, uh, after cleansing us from our sins and writing on our hearts and in our minds, that's when we become these epistles. And again, it's written, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust of your ignorance. Yeah. So that's where we are now. Soon he that shall come will come. Yeah. He'll receive us to himself, and he will be further glorified and known in the judgment and in glory. Because of that, Amen. his works are what are being demonstrated. Amen. And while it is necessary for the church to give attention to herself and diligence, making sure her calling and election, in self-examination and in the holding fast of her head, she is never to make or think of herself as primary. Now, as soon as you start preaching the church instead of preaching Christ, you're off base. We talk to the church. We we uh, recognize the church, but you, if if Christ isn't right at the center of it, like, so who is the church? What is the church for? It, 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 she becomes irrelevant. Amen. It's only in Christ that that uh, the church has has anything that is beneficial. Amen. So even the apostle Paul testified that the things he did to the saints as Saul were done in ignorance and unbelief. It vexed him. He Remember he said, I'm the least of all the saints, for I persecuted the church of God. It, it grieved his heart that he had ever done that to the brethren. But he wasn't overcome with that. But he recognized it. It's something that he would, he would not have had himself do. Now, there are errors which hurt the church because they have moved us off of the truth and the knowledge of God. We've learned to live around them. And I'm not saying that, that, you, that you go and you just march into places, but we have got to be valiant for the truth. Amen. Because without the word of God, that's, that's our foundation. Amen. That's what God has given us. Then we ourselves can be moved off of the foundation. Right. And our knowledge of God will be turned to darkness. And we'll be deceived. So when we gather together, we value those that God has set in the assembly to, to preach the word of God. Amen. We thank him for the advantage of being together with uh, saints of like precious faith. Amen. And it is a precious faith. And we, we avail ourselves of every advantage that God has given us. Giving thanks and glory to God for it. Amen. 
Now I'm going to, I'm going to, and you know, we've even mentioned some of these things. Being valued for the truth is to where the, where we know the truth of God, to be able to to speak with one another about these things, sharpen one another, advantage one another. Uh, in some places, I know that people get hammered if they just don't agree with something, but that's not the way it works. That you get hammered, you just learn to shut your mouth and go away and become incognito. We, we want to do when we come together is we want to speak about the Word of God, bring the Word of God to bear on what we say, what we think, what we do, and then to all grow up together into Christ. Now, uh, finally here, <laughs> Ephesians 4, 17 and 18. This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. But rather, brethren, we have been brought up. We have been put in Christ. Mm -hmm. He was the light of the world when he was here. Amen. And he dwells in us and have made us lights in the world. Amen. And so we, we as that, we are... We are light and savor. And so be salty and be bright. Amen. Any other closing comments? All right, we'll go ahead and close. Our Holy Father in heaven, we come giving thanks by your Son, Christ Jesus, for the knowledge that you have given us of yourself. Father, I pray that you would increase us in this knowledge not as those that would be puffed up by vain knowledge, but those that would be made grateful. And, and Father, our hearts would be more filled with love for Thee, for Your goodness and Your kindness, which has been given to us by Your grace. Father, we pray that we would, we would be even now to the glory of Your grace. And in that day, when we stand before you, that it, it would be to the, to the glory and, the, and knowledge of thy person and of the goodness of your works and your kindness to them that have come to you by Christ Jesus. We pray for the remainder of our service this day, that you would bless those who will stand before us, that you would give them unction by your spirit, and that we would be closer drawn to thee more resolved and made stronger in the faith of Christ Jesus. Lord, we pray that, that uh, well, we don't, Father. We confess that we do not rest in our own understanding, but we glory in the knowledge of God by Christ. Now, Lord, we pray your blessing upon the, the food we'll partake of and those who prepared it and provided it. We thank you for this time of fellowship, and we pray that that too would be unto thee. And now, Lord, we commend ourselves this day and thy people unto thee in the name of Christ with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen.